This cybersecurity tool is amazing. You need to deploy it. Not only is it free and open source, which I don't know how that's possible, but you're gonna learn so much about hacking and security while also protecting your stuff. It's a no brainer. I deployed the server in about five minutes and then deployed agents to all of my computers and servers, Mac, Windows, Linux. Now these agents are like the tattletales in school. They tell me everything. Things like security configuration or all my devices misconfigured. I don't know, but I do now. It'll check for known vulnerabilities, malware. And then this is kind of nuts. It can track a directory and see if any changes occurred. Files added, removed, documents edited. And this is even crazier. It can track the changes to the Windows registry. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. So all these devices send all that information to my server and I can see everything from one location. I get alerts, which can come at me via email or Slack or whatever. I can do things in response to those alerts, active response. So not only can I detect a brute force attack, I can do something about it block that IP address. This server, this tool is called Waza. It's a type of cybersecurity tool called a SIM, Security Information and Event Management. But I so badly want to call it a SIEM. I'm gonna call it a SIEM, I don't care. This type of tool is what the blue team or defensive side of cybersecurity will use to defend against the bad guys, to stop the hackers. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy this, because you need to, it's amazing. Again, not only will you be protecting your stuff, but you're gonna learn so much, and it's also kind of addicting. And seriously, this is something you could probably put on your resume. This is a project. Like, hey, I run my own SIEM, SIM, SIEM, SIEM. Seems pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> I, that was lame, I'm sorry. So you're convinced, let's talk about what you need. Really only two things, a Linux server or computer and something to monitor, so other computers. Most flavors of Linux are supported. I'll be installing it on Ubuntu. And more specifically, I'll be on a cloud machine in Linode. That's what I prefer so I can monitor everything with ease. And also it's ridiculously easy, I'll walk you through it here in a bit. But it can also be on-prem, on a server you already have, or it can be on a Docker container. <laughs> Let me get some room here. We're running out of room. Scoot down, there we go. And they even have an OVA for easy deployment on VirtualBox. Now, as far as system requirements for the WASA server, let me show you what they recommend. At minimum, they want two gigs of RAM and two CPU cores. That'll work for most people. If you got a lot of devices, if you're gonna be collecting lots of logs, you wanna go larger. Four gigs of RAM and eight CPU cores. Now, again, I'm gonna walk you through the cloud option and then also sprinkle in a little bit of Docker too, just for fun. Oh, almost forgot the most important thing, coffee. Everything in IT requires coffee. It's just the rules. First, we'll set up Waza or Wazu. I'm not sure. I'm just going to call it Waza in the cloud. So let's head on over to linode.com forward slash network chuck or check the link below. Now, not only is Linode the sponsor of this video, but they are my favorite cloud provider. Like, I'm not lying. Check this out. I have way too many virtual machines in the cloud because I just go in here and spin up something anytime I have a project. Anytime I wanna mess with something, I just go to Linode, spin up a quick virtual machine in seconds. Now, if you're new to Linode, this is gonna be free for you for the first 60 days. They're gonna give you a $100 credit to go crazy and play around with it. So if you haven't already, go ahead and get signed up right now and then get signed in and meet me back here. Now, the other reason I love Linode is they make deploying virtual machines like Waza super stinking easy. Check this out. I'm gonna go to create, Linode. I'll click on marketplace and then I'll search for Waza. There it is. Let's go ahead and click on that and just have it selected and we'll scroll down a bit. Now it's time for just a little bit of config. First, put an email address in for the SSL certificate, then a limited pseudo user account, Bernard Hackwell. This can be anything, just make it up. Put a password in and then we'll scroll down just a little bit until we see, select an image. We're using Ubuntu, perfect. Region, select somewhere close to you. Linode is a cloud provider, so they have data centers everywhere. Pick somewhere close to you so it'll be nice and fast. I'm in Dallas. And finally, our Linode plan. From here, let's click on shared CPU. They're cheaper. And here we have our plans or the size of our virtual machine. Now, normally I would pick this one right here. It's five bucks a month, super cheap. But for Waza, you'll want something a bit beefier, a bit bigger, something more like the Linode four gigabyte. Now, if you don't select the four gigabyte option for this Waza installation, it just won't work. I tried it. So just make sure you select this. Now, if you do wanna go for a smaller option like the Linode two gigabyte, I actually got that working with Docker and it worked pretty well. I'll walk you through that here in a second. Well, let's go ahead and do this. It's really not much more, it's so easy. So select four gigabyte, scroll down just a bit, label this sucker, whatever you want enter a root password, and finally we'll scroll down and click on create Linode at the bottom right. Ready, set, go. Now it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna bake you a VM in the cloud. Quick coffee break. It'll be a few minutes. Now once you see that your Linode is running, we can try and connect to it. Over here we have our SSH access command. We're gonna go ahead and copy this right here. And then launch your terminal, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It'll all work. And paste that in there. Hit enter, accept all fingerprints, put your password in, and we're in. But it may not be quite ready. Waza is still going through its installation. We can monitor it kind of right now by typing in HTOP, H-T-O-P. 
And we'll see right at the top there, the top process, DPKG or dpackage. That's how apps on Linux are installed and that's what's happening right now. So we can kind of sit there and watch that until that stops and we can try to connect here in a moment. And like see here, we have some Waza stuff there. The Waza indexer is being installed. There's a bunch of pieces to it, it's amazing. But again, quick coffee break and watch the magic happen. Now at this point, it's been about six minutes. Let's see if it's done. And we'll start with grabbing our password. By the way, I hit control C to get out of that. If we type in ls-al in our terminal here, we should see a .deployment-secrets.txt file. There it has our secrets or our passwords. Let's go ahead and cat that. Cat.deploymentsecrets, blah, blah. Got it. Bam, there's our passwords right there. The first one we want is the admin password at the top. Got our admin username and our admin password. Cool. Keep that there. Let's go back to our Linode dashboard here. And we're going to grab our Linode reverse DNS name or RDNS. So here in Linode, click on the network tab, scroll down just a little bit until we see the IP addresses section. And then we have the reverse DNS right here. There it is. Let's go and grab that copy it, open a new tab, and go to HTTPS, colon, whack, whack, paste that in. <laughs> Here we go. It's there. Now let's get logged in. Username, admin, password. Let's grab that from the terminal. There it is. Copy and paste. It's going to check and make sure things are good. Almost there. We're good. Awesome. This seems pretty cool. Last time I'll do that joke. Probably not. Seems like a well, namak. Sorry. <laughs> It's terrible. Now, before we move on, I am going to show the Docker install. It's super easy. If you don't care about that, that's fine. Just skip ahead. I've got timestamps below. Now, here's the Docker install. Perfect for on-prem or a smaller machine on Linode, which is what I'll be doing. Here at Linode, I'm going to click on Create Linode. I'll just deploy a standard Ubuntu 2204 LTS machine. Shared CPU. I know that the Linode 2 gigabyte plan will work. I tried it on the 1 gig. The containers just wouldn't run. Don't try it. But the two gig plan, it worked great. So click that, label it, something fun, put a password in, and then click on create Linode. How fast was that? Now, if you're doing this on-prem, just have a server that's running Docker. And of course, if you want to run the OVA, I'll put a link below in Waza's documentation. After a moment or two, you should see that your machine is running. Let's go and connect to it. We'll grab our SSH access command over here. Just copy that, launch my terminal, paste it, hit enter, accept all fingerprints, password, and we're in. Couple of things we'll do real quick. First, we'll update our repositories, sudo apt update. Now, many of you are gonna go, why is he doing sudo, your root? I always do sudo because I don't know what you're using. You may not be root right now. I just wanna make it simple. Anyways, I digress. Sudo apt update to update our repositories. Once that finishes up, we'll do a sudo apt install docker.io and docker-compose. We'll do a dash Y at the end. This is going to install Docker and Docker Compose. So let's go. Should be fairly quick. More of a coffee sip here. Awesome. It is finished. For the next step, I've got a link below. Go ahead and pull up the Waza documentation for Docker deployment. We'll one, two punch this real quick. First, we'll clone the Git repository. One command, let's copy that. Go back to your terminal, paste that command. Assuming you have Git installed, most OSs do. Clone, awesome. Type in LS, we'll see a new directory called Waza Docker. Let's go ahead and CD into that. CD Waza Docker. Type in ls once more, and we have one more directory we want to jump into. It's the single node directory because we're deploying one single node or computer. CD single node. Perfect. Now, the next thing we'll have to do is generate some self-signed certificates. They make that super easy for us. They even have a Docker Compose file to run and do that for us. And all we have to do is copy and paste this command. So copy this command right here, paste that in there, hit enter. It's going to pull those images down, run compose, and then that was it. That's done. Now for our next step. All we have to do is do the docker dash compose command with the up option, and then we'll do a dash D to launch it in the background. This will do everything for us. This is our last step in deploying this. It's super easy. I love Docker. Ready, set, go. This will take a moment. It's deploying a multi-tier application, pulling all the images, a lot of stuff going on. A little coffee break. We'll give us some time here. Okay, deployment is done, done, done. Let's confirm real quick by typing in docker stats get a real time view of those suckers running. Let's go get logged in. Let's check it out. We'll get back to our Linode dashboard here. Go to the network tab, scroll down just a little bit, find our reverse DNS name right here in the IP addresses section. Go ahead and copy that and we'll open up a new tab. Type in HTTPS colon whack whack, paste that in there. Let's go, fingers crossed. Okay, this is a self-signed cert. We'll get this little error message, no big deal. Just proceed. What's up? Sorry, um, this video has so many lame jokes. Let's get logged in. Default login will be admin. Password will be, according to was it documentation? What was it? Was it? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, it's a secret password, capital S, capital P. Easy enough. Just gotta check and make sure things are good. Almost. Okay, things are good. Now that we have Waza installed, let's get some agents added. Computers that we can monitor. So right here, we'll click on add agent. 
right here in the dashboard. And then right here, we'll have the option to deploy a new agent. Go ahead and click on that. This is super straightforward and easy. We'll start with the Linux host first. Here, I'm gonna do Ubuntu. And we'll do a Windows after this, by the way. Ubuntu. 15 or more. Our architecture is x86, but notice we have options for everything. It's awesome. Then we'll put our WASA server address in here. This will simply be your Linode reverse DNS name if you did it with me, or it could be an IP address, just something that the agent can have access to. So I'll copy that server address, the FQDN, fully qualified domain name, just like this. I will name that agent. It's optional, but I like to. Kali underscore Linux. We'll select a group. I'll put it in the default group. And then on step six, they give you one command to install the agent. Super cool, super easy. Let's copy that, copy command. And then here in Kali, I'll launch my terminal, paste that command, hit enter, pseudo password, and it's done. Cool, one more thing we have to do. Getting back to the was a dashboard. We need to enable this as a service. We'll just copy this command, all system CTL commands. Paste those commands in there, hit enter, and done, awesome. So now getting back to the WASA dashboard, we can go to the top left here on this drop down and click on agents. There it is right there, my first little guy, Kali Linux, his IP address, OS, and it's gonna show us so much more. Oh, I can't wait to show you this. But first, before we do that, let's add Windows real quick. But notice how fast and easy this is. In Windows, it's just as easy. Let's go ahead and do uh, deploy new agent once more. This time we'll click on Windows. Goodness, they still have Windows XP in here. <laughs> I guess you need a seam for this, man. But anyways, I'm on Windows 7 or more, or greater. No Windows ARM support, sad. Fully qualified domain name would be our same uh, domain name or IP address. Again, just something your agent can have access to. I'll name it, default group. And finally, at step six, just like Linux, we're gonna have our little one-liner command using PowerShell. Keeping in mind, you will need to run this as administrator because you will need admin privileges. So I'll just copy that command, jump into my Windows computer here, so here in Windows, I'll launch my Windows terminal. Keeping in mind, I'll have to launch it as admin. So right click this and click on run as administrator. Paste my command in there. Hit enter, gonna do its thing. And then one more command, we'll have to start the service here on Windows, just like Linux. Net start WASA SVC. WASA is starting and we're off to the races. Let's go check WASA, the WASA dashboard. We'll go to our agents. Oh, there it is, it's still coming up. Let's click on refresh over here on the right. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Come on, connect, I'm impatient. And after a billion refreshes, no, I'm just kidding, it's like three, um, it's up. Awesome. And here's our two machines, Linux and Windows. And you know what? I wanna add one more just for fun. Ready, go. It was seriously actually almost that fast. So here we have our agents, and now let's click on one of these and see what's going on. This is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna click on the new one I just added, the Cirx Network Chuck. This is from my Cirx search video. It's a public box, and it's gonna be kind of fun to look at. Let's click on that guy. And here's our agent dashboard for this one computer, this one server. There's a lot going on, but just keep in mind, at the top here in Waza, we kind of have breadcrumbs, and I love this. We've got agents, and we're drilled down into the specific agent we're looking at. And then here at the dashboard, so much going on. Now, I'm not gonna show you everything. There's way too much, way too much fun to be had. But I will point out a few things that are like kind of wow. First, the MITRE framework, the MITRE attack framework. We won't go too deep into this, but just know it's a database of hacking techniques that hackers will use to attack machines. This will look at that framework and tell you, hey, your machine might be vulnerable to this, these tactics, or your machine is actively being attacked in these ways. And notice um, some things are happening to mine. We'll take a look at those here in a bit. And then quick drive by here, Compliance. Many companies have to obey certain compliance standards like PCI, GDPR, NIST, HIPAA. This will check all your computers, all your servers, and tell you what's going on. That's kind of crazy. Now, you may not care about policies. You should if you want to get into security, but it may not be important for you right now. Scroll down a bit. What about configuration? Is your server or your computer configured securely? Do you know that for a fact? Well, this will tell you. <laughs> it has a module called SCA or Secure Configuration, I think it's Audit or Assessment, Secure Configuration Assessment and it will pull out a CIS assessment, this is for Ubuntu Linux, and tell you how good you are. Um, 39% on my score, failed 715 of these. Now let me give you like kind of a baseline for what that means. Let's jump into this report. Notice here in the breadcrumbs, I did jump into the security configuration assessment section, and it will tell me all the things I failed at. Let me actually sort by uh, good stuff. It's gonna be a small list. And most of this is like default, so like app armor is installed. Cool. But it'll go deeper and tell you things like, hey, you should disable USB storage. If I drill down to SSH, because you can search for specific things like that keyword, it'll tell me things like, hey, don't install Telnet. UFW is not enabled. Disable SSH root login. So not only is it showing you like, hey, you're insecure, but it's also teaching you, because if I click on any one of these, it'll tell me like, hey, here's the rationale. Here's why we're telling you this. Here's how you fix it. Here's how you check it. And then it shows you all the MITRE techniques that can be used against having that misconfiguration. That's so freaking powerful. Are you kidding me? It's, okay, I'm getting a little excited. Coffee will calm me down. That's just one module. Speed mode, let's get back to our agent dashboard here. 
Here on the menu, we have security events, showing you things like authentication failures, which could be brute force attacks. It'll show you top five alerts. It'll give you a list of security alerts. Super powerful. And then here's something you're not gonna see right away. If I click on more, we have vulnerabilities. It'll check your system for vulnerabilities, but it's not enabled by default. I'll show you how to do this here in a moment. But I have another system I already had up and running. And if I look at vulnerabilities for that one, it's gonna check all my applications and tell me like, hey, are there known CVEs out there or common vulnerabilities? And I've got a bunch, <laughs> like a lot. But just look at this. Deploy this for your house or your servers or whatever you have and play security admin. Go in here and go, oh wow, I've got 170 critical CVEs. I should go figure out how to fix those. The learning opportunity, are you kidding me? And then here on my server I already had going, I do wanna show you one thing here on one of my Windows hosts or Windows agents. This is kind of fun. I have my daughter's computer here. This is amazing. Check this out. I'll click on Chloe. And the one thing you're gonna love about Windows host is the integrity monitoring module. Oh my gosh, the thing's amazing. Check it out. This sucker's gonna monitor all the important files and registry keys that are m normally modified when something's being hacked. It's gonna look at things and tell you when things are being adjusted. So like, check this out, if I go to events, it'll tell me each time a registry key is changed. Like this one was deleted, firewall policy. I don't know why that happened. Now some of these are automatic, like the Windows OS is doing it, but others can be bad. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. And it's not just registry keys. If I go to inventory over here, I can see that it has an inventory of the files it's monitoring and all the registry keys it's monitoring and what they're currently set to. Is it not insane? And here in a moment, I'll show you how you can uh, monitor specific keys and get alerts on those keys and files too. It's so fun. Now at this point, your seam seems to be doing great. I lied, I was gonna do it one more time. It seems to be doing pretty good. Pretty much all you have to do is set it up, connect an agent to it, and it collects information. And you can go crazy and learn cybersecurity and start to protect your stuff. But you can also tinker with this quite a bit. You can enable more modules, set up more alerts, monitor more things. So if you're interested in that, we're gonna walk through a few more options here. Now, the first thing we'll do is look at file monitoring through Windows. It's so powerful and so cool. So back here at the was it and since I deployed with you right now in this video. A couple things real quick, just before we jump into that. If I click on the home icon, it's gonna take me to the was it dashboard and it's gonna show me like all the modules I could jump into. So for example, if I wanna jump into security events, it's gonna show me security events, but right now it's being filtered to look at one agent. I can unpin that to where it's showing me everything from every agent. That's pretty cool. And you can do that with most modules. Let's go back home. Now let's click on Waza once more, the little Waza drop down here. Let's click on agents. Now again, I'm not going over everything, every little thing you can do. And you don't have to know all these things, but you can play around with it. You can go crazy. I'm just giving you enough to get started and have a little bit of fun and things I got really excited about. So let's click on agents here. We'll click on my Windows machine. A couple things I wanna show you real quick. If I click on integrity monitoring, this is the module that we'll use to monitor files. Notice I don't have any events right now. I've got it filtered right now by the last 24 hours and I've just connected this thing, nothing's happened. But if I go to the inventory, I can see that it already has scanned and inventoried all the default files it'll look for in the directories and my registry keys. Now I believe it's set to scan everything every 12 hours if it notices a change, it'll let you know, it'll alert you. Pretty cool. But with files, we can also do a real-time notification and rule set. Check this out. I'm gonna jump into my Windows host and change some configuration for the agent file. Now you can find that here. I'm gonna go to my Windows Explorer, go to my C drive, go to program files x86. Now if this is all like weird for you, like, oh man, Windows file system, I don't know what's going on. I do detail a lot of what this means and how it's organized in my Windows Fundamentals course on my academy. Check it out, link below. Anyways, let's continue. It's in x86 and in a folder called ossec-agent. Jump in there, continue, you gotta have admin access. If I scroll down just a bit, I'll see a file named ossec.conf. That's your configuration file for your agent. Let's go ahead and open that with Notepad. Open with Notepad. Oh, and by the way, you can do the same thing on Linux. I'll put documentation below. It's pretty much the same process, just editing the same type of agent file. But let's walk through this real quick. Here in this file, I'm just gonna search for syscheck to get to the syscheck section. That's hard to say. And here, right, uh, you can see that I have the file integrity monitoring section. And you can see right here, all the directories that is by default set to monitor. So what we'll do here is we'll just choose a place amongst all these directory options. And we'll add a little configuration here. We'll type in directories and we'll add an option that'll give us real time alerts. It's really simple. It's called real time, just like that. Have it equal yes in quotes. We'll add one more option, report underscore changes, have that equal yes in quotes. And we'll add one more, check underscore all and have that equal yes as well. So just to make sure we're on the same page here, we're specifying a directory and we're giving it these options, real time yes, report changes yes, and check all yes. We'll close that out and then add the directory we're gonna monitor with all these options. Let's do our desktop. So we'll do C colon backslash users backslash your username. Mine is network chuck. 
backslash desktop. And then we'll close that out with a left arrow forward slash directories, just like this. So now we'll save this file, file save, and then we'll restart the service by launching our terminal as administrator, right click run as administrator, and we'll say restart service dash name was a cool. So that should be good. So I'm gonna open up my WASA dashboard real quick. Make sure I'm on the events tab. Notice I'm looking at the last 24 hours, nothing's happened. Let's change something on our desktop. This is so cool and powerful. I hope this illustrates how cool this is. Just gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna add a new file. New text document. Can you see this? Just take about five seconds. One, two. Let's take a look. Let's refresh this. <laughs> there it is. Now it's weird it said added, deleted, added. Oh, I think because I changed the name in real time. But look, it monitored that I added a new, uh, a new file. Um, check this out. So that's that's one alert. If I change anything about it, let's open it up. Say, hey, I'm changing stuff. We'll save it. Let's see if a new alert comes in. I'll refresh my options here or refresh my page. There it is. Sys check event modified. And it's like, hey, the checksum changed on this. It'll even tell me down here what I changed the text I added. How crazy is that? Now we can do the same kind of thing with the Windows registry. Now it won't be real time. They don't have that option, but it will scan every 12 hours. You can change that interval. Let me show you real quick. We can specify. So right now, if you look in our, was it inventory, right? We can see that it does have an inventory. <laughs> look at our new file. It does have an inventory of registry keys it automatically monitors, but we can add specific ones that we want to have seen. So let's add a custom one real quick. I'll open up regedit here in Windows to edit my registry. And let's add one inside, uh, I don't know, HK local machine. We'll go to software, maybe classes. And let's add one right here. Right click, say new key. And we'll say Bernard Hackwell. Bam. We'll change the value to something fun. So what I'll do here is I'll right click this key and say copy key name. And then we'll go back to our agent configuration file. And you'll notice just under that same kind of section where we're adding directories, we also have registry keys we can add. So I'll go kind of towards the bottom here, just underneath the last registry entry and right before the entries to ignore, I'll line myself up with everything else. Type in Windows registry, paste my key name, and then close it out with a left arrow forward slash Windows registry and a right arrow. Cool, that should be all we need. And it'll change the frequency because like I said, it's gonna take 12 hours to find this. We don't want it to do that. So up here we have frequency that syscheck is executed by default every 12 hours. 43,200, let's change that from that to 60. So every every minute, actually let's do 30 seconds. Let's be quick. So I'll save this file. Then I'll restart my service, my WASA service once more. Restart service name, WASA, got it, cool. So now getting back to our WASA dashboard, here in our integrity monitoring section for our Windows machine, I'm gonna go over here to inventory and just see if it finds that new registry key. I'll go to registry, I'll search for, what do we name it, Bernard? Nothing yet, wait for it to find it. There it is right there. So it found the key. It's looking at it, it's monitoring it, cool. Now let's go to events. Now you can see that we've got some registry changes, mainly time, and we're getting that because we were setting it to every 30 seconds. Notice nothing about a registry key here. Let's go change it. Let's go modify it. Here in Bernard Hackwell, I'll change the value to something else fun. Or you got hacked. Cool, let's change it there. It'll take about 30 seconds. Let's take a little coffee break and let's monitor our was a dashboard. I'll refresh it a few times and oh, there it is. Register key modified. How killer is that? Now you may be wondering, okay, big deal, Chuck. I barely even know what the Windows registry is. Why do I care if it's changed? And first of all, the registry like has the settings for the configuration of your operating system. So if things are changed here, it's changing everywhere else. But some common things you might see changed, especially with malware, is this key here. Let's see, Microsoft, Windows. Where's it at? Where's it at? Windows, current version. There's a lot of keys in here, man. And we have run and run once. These keys are changed when you add like a new startup application for your system. So what malware will do is I'll go in here and add a new key, new string value, call this, I'll call this bad stuff. And I'll just say internet explorer. <laughs> let's, let's copy that location. Okay. And looking back at Waza, it does monitor that by default. And here in the events, if I refresh it, there it is. Registry key added and modified. There's the name of it right there, bad stuff. That's pretty powerful, right? The next thing I wanna show you, actions. They're so powerful, check this out. Let's go to our agents here and I'll jump into my Linux machine here, Cirque's Network Chuck. And let's go to security events and I'll jump to events. Now there'll be a lot of events here because this machine's public. Now I'm getting things like attempt to log in using a non-existent user, getting brute forced from Russia using the user name Pi. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, we can do something with that. And actually I wanna try it myself. I'm gonna try and brute force. I'm gonna launch my Kali Linux machine here and I'll use Hydra to brute force the login. And I'll use the username uh, Bernard Hackwell. And we'll see if it sees us. Ready, set, go. 
after a pseudo password. <laughs> here we go. Okay, it's attacking. We should see a log. Let's go look at the logs here. Security events, events. This happened just now. Let's see if it was us. Username, Bernard Hackwall. So there, there we are. How cool was that? Let's stop that nonsense. Let's real quick see if I try to log into it. Okay, so I'm getting a password prompt, so I'm not being blocked. So clearly I can sit here and just try and try and try again to my heart's content. But what if I had our seam actively respond to that and add it to the block list, drop it, add it to the firewall. We can do that, check it out. It's called active response, which can be used for so many things, but I wanna demo this real quick. Now to change this, we're gonna to go to the configuration of our WASA server. So we're gonna go here to the WASA menu, go to management and then click on configuration. From here, we're gonna to go to the top right and click on edit configuration. And we're gonna scroll down a bit until we see a section called active response. Actually, you know, why am I tripping? I'm just gonna search for it, active response. Cool, there it is, active response. So I'm scroll down a bit until I see this right here. It's kind of giving you a format for what it should look like. And I'm gonna copy this config from the documentation. Thank you, Waza. Check it out here. Command is firewall drop, location, the server it's uh, the rule is executing on. And then it's gonna look at a rule or it's looking for a rule. This rule is what triggers this firewall drop. Now, when we tried to brute force, what rule was triggered? Let's go find out. I'm gonna jump to uh, our agents. Go back to my circs, go to security events, events, and let's see, it was just earlier, right? Like at 33. And so here's the alert. You can see, yes, it was Bernard Hackwell. And there's the alert ID right there, the rule ID, 5710. That's what we want it to alert off of. So let's go back to our configuration thing here. And we'll change that rule from 5763 to 5710. And this will time it out or add the firewall rule. And the timeout here is 180 seconds. It'll block the attacker for 180 seconds. Pretty cool. So let's save that. Click on save, restart our manager. Just give that a little, little bit of time here. Restarting, please wait, coffee break. Okay, it's restarted. Now what we wanna do now is go back to our agent, go back to Cirque's network chuck, and we'll go to security events and go to events. So last thing we saw, agent started and stopped. Refresh that. Okay, we're here. Now let's go and try to brute force it one more time. Actually, real quick, let's see if we can log in. So this time I'm gonna use root. I know a real user on that system. Let's see if it lets me. Okay, so we're, it's allowing us right now. Now, we don't have to brute force. We can just try to log in with Bernard Hackwell. What that should do is trigger. Now it's right now it's 12.03. It should trigger that new active rule. Let's go see. Bam, there it is. So 12.03, attempt, attempt to log in with non-existent user, Bernard Hackwell. Immediately, the firewall at drop active response blocks me. So now, right now, for 180 seconds anyway, if I even try to log in, even with a real user, I get nothing. I'm blocked. I can't even ping it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Now, let's do a continuous ping and see when it lets me out, out of jail here. Oh, we're back, we're back. Okay, so how cool is that? And just so you know, you can do those active responses based on a variety of rules. It's so custom, that's why it's so powerful. You can even do it off of like a certain command was run or a certain log came about in, in the system. You can run a, 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 an active response. It's so crazy. Now, two more things I wanna show you real quick. First is vulnerabilities. Um, right now, if I go to my search network chuck and I go to vulnerabilities, nothing there. Why? Because it's not enabled. By default, the system does not search for that, so it's really really easy to set this up. We'll go to Waza, Management, Configuration, just like before. We'll go to Edit Configuration, and here we're gonna search for Vulnerability Detector. Right there, it tells us, enabled? No, <laughs> let's change that to yes. We definitely want that. Then we'll click on Save and Restart Manager. Confirm. Now, so once this restarts, notice the options it has here. It'll run a full scan every six hours. It'll also run on start when the service starts up. So once this finishes, we'll restart our service in Windows and Linux and see what happens. Okay, cool. It's done there. I'm gonna go to Windows, restart my service here, and restart my service here by restarting Waza Agents. Cool. So now at this point, and if we check our agents, I'll just go to my Windows machine here. Go to vulnerabilities. Cool. So Scan's complete, didn't find anything. Now the reason for that is that my Windows machine has like no apps installed on it. But just know to enable the vulnerability scanning, you have to enable it on the system on the Waza server. But the agents have that configured by default. Now if I go back to my other server that has all kinds of fun stuff configured, I gotta get logged back in here. Chloe, she has a bad version of VLC Media Player. High severity CVE. Wow, look at that. Dude, this is fun. Gives you all the details of it. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. But I wouldn't have known that if I didn't have this on her system and it just tells me automatically. Now, speaking of telling you automatically, you'll need some sort of alert, right? Waza has that. They've got email alerts and Slack alerts. I'm gonna show you Slack real quick, how to set that up. Now, first what I'll do is open on Slack and create a new channel just for Waza. Waza alerts. Now I'll go out to Slack and create a new app. 
Now this will not be a tutorial on how Slack apps work. I'll just walk you through the basics you need to know about right now. And this goes without saying you do need a Slack account. So I'll click on create new app from scratch, name it was a uh, alerts, select my workspace, create the app. And then all I wanna add really is an incoming webhook, activate it. And then at the bottom, I'll click on add new webhook to workspace. I'll click my new channel, was uh, alerts, allow, and that's it. And all I need from this is this webhook URL. I'll copy that, get back to my Waza dashboard. And I'm gonna go back to that configuration page we were at before where we spent a lot of time. I'll click on Waza, go to management, and then go to configuration. Same thing as before, click on edit configuration. And here I'm gonna search for integrations or in just integration. And it looks like I don't have a section for that. I'll just add it here. So I'll just go to the top and just under global and I'll paste this config from the documentation. The only thing I'll change here is pasting my webhook right there, which I need to copy again, paste it there. And actually there is one more thing I wanna change just in case you don't wanna be killed with alerts because this default <laughs> setting will have a bunch of alerts sent to me based on like all the events. And of course you can change the severity level of events that are sent to you or even just specify a specific rule ID you're looking for. So for example, right underneath here I can add rule ID and what do you say we do 5710? That same rule as earlier that we were doing the action rule off of. Cool, so we have our webhook in place, the URL. We have our rule to alert off of. Let's save it. Save and restart manager. Once that is restarted, we'll do our little test here in a moment. And real quick, look, there's nothing in the uh, Waza alerts yet. It's kind of quiet here. Cool, it's restarted. Now let's try and log in with Bernard Hackwell again. That should block us. And then over here, bam! Was alert, actually hit my watch too. Was an alert, look at that. Invalid user Bernard Hackwell from this IP address, which I'm gonna have Nick or Austin block right now. That's awesome, right? So, okay, this is probably a long video, I realize that. But Waza is a powerful tool that will not only help you protect your family, your own lab, your business, but it'll teach you a ton about security, about hacking, about blue team. And the fact that it's free and open source, that I just did all of this, it costs me nothing except for the hosting, which if you do it on-prem, it's gonna be free for you. It's just kind of crazy. So I hope you have as much fun with this tool as I have and will continue to have fun with. Let me know your thoughts below. What do you think? Let me know how your Waza installation implementation went. I wanna know all about it. Anyways, that's all I have. Thank you for joining me in this video. Thank you for having a little bit of coffee with me. I'll see you in the next video.